<laughs> Welcome to Ascension with a Course in Miracles. Today is July the 21st, 2021. My God, that's 2121. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Gotta pay attention to the signs. <laughs> and, and who has joined us in the name on your that I can see is R L O. Oh, is that Rebecca? Yeah, it's Rebecca. Oh, awesome, awesome. Hey. Hi, Rebecca. Yes. Oh, so good to have you guys here. Oh my gosh. Amazing things. Rebecca, do you uh, mind just giving me, giving all of us, sharing with us from last week, you know, you were so willing to go through a process and let yourself look at things differently, uh, specifically with work. Can you share of what that experience was like for you? Uh, sure. Um, so during the call, I, I always love coaching. I, you know, I, I'm always open for a new, fresh perspective, um, you know, because I, I just always welcome that. So I appreciated it last week. Um, I took it in, and this week I um, really tried to take my full authentic self to work into every experience I came in contact with, and um, it was much better, you know, um, I sort of let the, let the stuff roll off, if you will, because there's just a lot of junk, but I don't have to own it. So that's kind of where I'm at. And um, I likely will not stay there very much longer. Some other opportunities are coming up, but um, yeah. So. Oh, I love hearing that. So there's only one thing that I'm going to, to ask you to take in and, and kind of add to that and we're going to actually be talking about that and we're going to be reading today what, and what that is let me go ahead and mute everybody um and that is what you're going to let roll off of you be very deliberate in recognizing that you had a part in creating that because one of the tricks that the ego uses to keep us from ascending to our full power to, well, not to our full power, we're always using our power, but to ascend to being fully aware that how we've been using our power is to be very clear that what we don't like that is in our experience has to be there by our invitation for it to be there. And that is how we reclaim our power. One of the things that I see too many people who enter into, you know, the spiritual journey and, and they're in the process of awakening is that we become light chasers and deny what is, what is dark in the world. And until we acknowledge that what we're letting go, we placed it there, then we're always taking our somewhat disempowered self into the next experience. And we will always, always, always recreate that which we have not embraced as ours. Because as a powerful creator, until all of it is created by us, we cannot own that we are the creator that can then create deliberately only what we desire. Because we've been trained into creating, um, into believing that other people do things to us, but they're only doing things for us to help us see in a mirror who we are. And when you can say, oh yes, you know, this stuff that I don't enjoy, I needed to see it. it. It's clearly there. I'm the one who chose to work for this company. I've stayed here while they did things that I didn't like. Um, so I'm going to own that I participated in this dance and I just don't want to dance here anymore. So that there's no blame in them because whatever we blame makes us lame. And then we have to take it into the next experience because we have to love things into dissolving. And the way we love things into dissolving and dissolving what no longer serves us is through the acceptance that it is ours. And then we release it because if it's theirs, we can't release. It's only released when it is fully ours. So thank you so much for that share, Rebecca. So grateful for that. All right, everybody, I'm gonna jump in to, to the teachings of the Course in Miracles because we are going to go through a continuation of what we started last week. And it is, it, we're in chapter 21. This particular chapter is titled The Responsibility for Sight. And it is 
is a powerful, powerful chapter. And we're looking, I'm sorry, the chapter 21, the title is Reason and Perception. We need to understand how we lost our, our ability to reason. Yes, Christo. Um, can I just mention uh, at around 12.30, I'll have to jump off. And um, so I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just disappear. I don't know if I'll be back. I have oh, okay. Okay. And, and if anybody has uh, comments like that, just put them in the chat and we'll be able to, you know, to grab it from there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting us know. Um, yes, Kathy, thanks for your note too. Thanks for listening, even though you're not um, able to be in the, the full camera. But anyhow, um, so chapter 21, title of reason and perception. We need to understand how perception is created we need to be very clear that what we see out there in the world that we are perceiving, we projected it out there as powerful creators who wanted to have this human incarnation. And that's how we take our power back is by saying, yep, I put you there for me to see what is true about me. What I deny about you, I deny about me. That's just the way projection and, and perception work. And then we are focusing in section number two, which is the responsibility for sight. The responsibility for sight is exactly what we have to uh, recover, is responsibility for how we see things. Are we seeing things through our lower chakras, which is our conditioned self, our lower self, our human self, our ego self? Or are we able to have the sight of our higher self? This is being able to clearly see through the third eye, see the way Christ saw things, um, how Buddha saw things, how Martin Luther King saw things, Mahatma um, or Mahatma. Well, yeah, Gandhi saw things. And we've got to get really clear that we all have the same ability to see clearly like that open up your, your seventh chakra, your crown chakra, and allow yourself to plug in to the energy of all that is and get into that, that movement, that toroidal movement that allows us to, to, to give and receive and to recognize our connection to all that is. So I'm gonna read the paragraph. Um, it's a little statement inside of paragraph two. Then I'm gonna read a couple of lines to bring us all into into the same page and then we'll start with the reading for today. So inside of paragraph two was, I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings that I experience and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. We are all powerful creators. Even the Bible in the Old Testament, we were created in the image of God. God imagined us into existence to create as God creates. A Course in Miracles is full. Of, of statements that God created us to create as itself. When you know that God is love, our ability to create is a loving ability. And we will project a new earth eventually from our higher chakras. Once we clean up the density of our lower chakras, which hold us down in 3D. So when we recognize that we choose the feelings that we experience and I decide upon the goal that I would achieve is because we are, we decided to descend into our physicality. We have to be responsible for ascending into our divinity and all of the emotions, the energy of love, not put into motion. We have to feel it to heal it. All of the anger, the distrust, the, the rage, the, the upset, those are all lower chakra emotions that have to be acknowledged from a powerful place. Again, if you blame your lame, you have to be clear that you're recovering power by looking at what you don't like and saying, thank you for teaching me something about myself. We're not condoning what was done to us. We're just accepting our responsibility for how we are processing what is being mirrored for us. That's all that this is about. And I hope you understand the distinction because it's a very powerful distinction. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I asked. When we get that as powerful beings, we enter into this world to have experiences, what is experienced is a desire to bring love to it. If we are not uh, raised by conscious parents and are taught to stand in our sovereignty and love whatever is happening, send love to these crazy people who are unconscious, 
we then begin to suppress our love because the ego mind immediately goes into, I'm not safe here. If you can't be yourself and express your light, the message is, I better cover up my light. My light is not safe. My light gets me in trouble. We all have to face that story that being our authentic selves is what got us in trouble. And here's the thing. Our authentic self troubled those who were in their inauthenticity. It troubled those who were already in their story. Our happy, joyful self was a nuisance to those who were depressed and tired, who came in late from work, who were you know, working on, on the perpetual hamster wheel of life, forcing people to work to the bone, in debt, in all of the craziness that this world has conditioned us to believe is true. And because we have a hierarchy of authority outside of us, it starts with mom and dad, then it's teacher, and then it's preacher, and then it's government, and then it's boss, and then it's spouse, and then it's, you know, uh, other people, then it's the, the military, then it's the, the medical establishment. Everybody outside of us becomes an authority. And guess what? If they're unconscious, they're always going to be troubled by our light. They're always going to be annoyed by our joy because it's a projection for them of the joy that they don't have. And instead of saying, oh my goodness, your joy just reminded me to be more joyful, they go, turn that down. You're being too loud. You're being too, too show off. You're being you know, too whatever. And if you buy into that you have to suppress your light, it's because you need the lesson that your light is your God-given gift to the planet. If you don't turn it on, this planet is going to just get darker and darker and more insane because people are operating with the idea that others are responsible for their peace. So this is something that has been handed down consistently generation after generation for millennia. This is the generation. We are the generation that we've been waiting for. We are the generation that must do what needs to be done to take full responsibility, get our patriotic stance back when it pertains to this country, get our courage back when it pertains to um, our body and say, no, it's my body. I do not consent. Get our courage back in our spiritual path and say, you know what? I'm not accepting that God is outside of me anymore. If I'm made in its image, I am imagined exactly as I'm a carbon copy. So we've got to get clear that this is a journey of taking full responsibility for who we are from a powerful place. So once, once we are good doing that, then we deceive ourselves no longer and think that we are helpless. That's what's so powerful. That's the sentence number six in paragraph six. Then we go on to the place where we say, in, or the course says in sentence number four, paragraph three, no accident nor chance is possible within the universe as God created it, uh, outside of which is nothing. God did not put power outside of us. There is nothing outside of us. All power is inside of us. This is what the powers that be don't want us to understand. Because if we tap into our inner power, we will not put up with their, their controls. And when we're no longer afraid of them, guess what they're going to see? The projection of their fear on us. They have been blaming us, saying, you people are afraid. You people, we need to take care of you. You can't handle being responsible. We've got to give you government subsidies. We've got to give you social security. You can't, you're not responsible with your money. You can't take care of your body. You can't take care of your your planet. We got to do it all for you. And we've been little by little talked into giving our power to authority. The process of awakening is, can be instantaneous for some. For most of us, it requires the repetitive aspect of choosing again and again and again to stand in our sovereignty over our, our, our enslavement, because that is what we have allowed ourselves to experience. Our mind has been enslaved because we, we learn to value safety over sovereignty. So this, this is a powerful, powerful journey. So I'm going to read, um, oh, let me just read this, this other few other sentences, number eight in paragraph three. So we have been given a gift. And by this gift, 
it uh, for by this gift is given you the power to release your savior that he may give salvation unto you the savior our savior you know who saves us it's not jesus out there and the course in miracles is really clear channeled by jesus what saves us is recognize recognizing the christ consciousness inside of us what is the christ consciousness is the higher frequency of perceiving things when we elevate our perception to see things from the mountaintop the vista is very different than from the valley from the valley you pretty much can only see what's in front of you you can sort of see that there is up there but your focus on what's at the bottom that is where the powers that be feed off of our blinders on and they lay even more on us because until we are ready to say hey there's a mountain there let me climb it and see the whole picture we cannot ascend into clearing our mind from the low density beliefs and ascending to receive the truth of who we are so that then we can give that gift salvation is i save myself from all the bs that i have bought into I save myself. That salvation is an inside job. We have to be the change we want to see in the world. And as we change our perspective, we stop blaming other people. That's how we save them, which translates to we spare them our blame because we've taken responsibility for our light. You start shining your light, they're not going to like it because when the light gets turned on in the midst of a dark area, it's blinding. It's uncomfortable. You turn that light off. We've all been in a dark room and somebody turned the light. Oh, get that light out of, you know, it's bothering my eyes. We have to adjust to the light slowly. This is a dimmer process, turning up the light little by little by little. But you can't do that until you choose to be responsible for this gift that has been given to us. So if we withhold that light, this is in paragraph four, sentence number two, if we withhold it and and we keep the world as we now see it, the world's not going to change. So we have to give it away and everything that we see is going to go away. We've got to give away our light. So with our light, we can see clearly what's going on. And then we stopped with this sentence, which was sentence number six. So in, in, in all of this awareness, it stated, here is the world that you do not want brought to the one that you do. When we see clearly with the vision from the top of the mountain, what we do not like, nope, we are not going to operate in an egoic evil. We're not going to participate in blaming and shaming other people because if you do that, in blame, there's retaliation, there's revenge. We watch that on the news. You know, there's constant ping pong with politics back and forth, people blaming each other. I have to censor you because you're saying something horrible. No, you're censoring me because you can't handle the truth. Going back and forth, the ping pong is never ending down here because like attracts like. That negative energy attracts more of that negative density. So we need to look at it and say, I don't want it anymore. Then we're going to pick up where... It's going to be fresh now. So we're in paragraph number four, sentence number seven. And here, the one that you do is given you because you want it. When we're clear, I don't want this, I want that, then we begin to co-create the world that we desire. The world that we desire is a world, all of us want the same thing, that has life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, our way, because God created us to extend light. And when we extend our true self, we are happy and we want to find our happiness in a way that feels good within us and in all of us that, that wake up. If you're asleep, this, is, this doesn't make sense. This is cuckoo stuff. All of us, when we wake up, realize that we want we want healthy food because our body craves it. We want clean air because our body wants to breathe that which is, is healthy. We want clean water because our vessel is made of water and like attracts like when your frequency is higher, you want something with a higher frequency, cleanliness with um, something that is that is vibrating equally to your consciousness because consciousness dictates low consciousness means you don't know much about your truth, high consciousness, you're aware of your truth. And then then there's the process of shifting from the low and lifting into the high. And for that, you need to know what you don't want so that you can be clear about what you want. 
but you can't let go of what you don't want if you say you didn't create it. You have to own your creation. Yes, I chose to come to this crazy planet like I choose to go to an amusement park. And I've been playing on all of these rides. Some journeys have been fun. Some experiences have been not so fun. I like this roller coaster. I don't like that one. But all of us went into the madhouse. All of us went into the haunted house. My kids love haunted houses. I don't like that. that that's not my frequency. Little by little by little, we have to say, I came to the amusement park called planet earth i don't like that ride i don't like that ride i am certainly not going to go back into the haunted house that that's where horror and terror happen why and then you come out of the haunted house you come out of the, the it, and you see that it's all a playground then you choose to play in the love canal or the you know the merry-go-round the the easy stuff we have to acknowledge what is low density what is high frequency, and that we get to pick which one we are going to embody so that we can be in the world, but not of it. So we recognize those in, in those states of density, and we bless them. We spare them of our judgment because we realize, just like me, I've been there. I've been delusional. But just like me, you can change too. And when we call another into their greatness is by reminding them, hey, that's okay. I respect your choice. You're the creator of your own reality. My kids hated that every time I said, you know, oh, mom, I, I don't like this. I don't like that. Well, you're the creator of your reality. If you don't like that, don't keep creating it. Mom, <laughs> stop telling me I'm so powerful. I want you to fix it. And I was like, no way. I'm not taking responsibility for your power because then you're going to be dependent on me. And my kids were teenagers, I was like, I don't want you dependent on me always making your decisions because then I'm never going to get rid of you. I got just a couple more years of having to deal with you. So you find your power so that we can part ways and you live your independent life. I live my independent life and you get to do whatever it is that you want to do. As much as they hated hearing that, it's what helped them claim their power. At some point, they decided things kept repeating that they didn't like. They had to go, oh my goodness. I'm creating my own reality. If I don't like the hangover, stop drinking the night before. If I don't like the relationships that don't work, stop being in relationships that don't work. So anyhow, we have to claim our power, but it has to be equal. If you don't like something, accept your part in it because that is necessary for you to shift all of your power to what you want. Otherwise, you're going to be leaking power holding that memory inside of you because wherever you go, there you are and you will take your frequency with you and it will continue to attract your lessons. So it goes on to say in, in sentence number, let's see, number eight, um, yet for, for this, the power of your wanting must be first recognized. So we need to honor that we want what we want and don't back down. If you desire something, don't stop until you get clear about what it is that you desire and why you desire it. Our egos desire things that are not good for us that, well, I'm not going to say it's not good for us. They're lessons. Everything is a lesson. God would have us learn as the Course says. So pay attention to what you desire. If you want well-being, your ego is going to have you believe that it comes to you from the outside. Your God essence, your, your higher self is going to have you know that it comes from the inside. The only difference is that you, when you're conscious, if you know healing happens on the inside, you may go outside of you to find the right and perfect practitioner that will assist in that healing. They may give you the pill or the surgery, or they may give you, you know, the injection or whatever it is, or the herbs or the diet that in their higher frequency in that field, if you trust them, you're receiving from God showing up as another person, guidance as to how you can heal yourself. If you're afraid and say, oh, I can't heal myself unless I get a job or get a pill or get the surgery, you are then saying they have the power. Guess what you just did? You're not gonna have healing because you don't own that healing happens inside of you. Why do you think that the majority of the deaths that happen in this world are at the hands of medical, um, and, and there's a term for that, when 
procedures go bad, when medicine have side effects that, that kill you, those things that don't work are because people don't believe that they will and they have to have that consequence because it's a mirror, it's a lesson. I remember doing some research back when I was really understanding the power of our mind. This was about, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. And I came upon, I had just read a book um, by Dr. Bruce Lipton, The Biology of Belief. And he was talking about the power that we have. And it, it is not, our biology doesn't dictate uh, what we experience. Our biology is a result of our environment, what we believe, the, the, what we experience, even if it moves with us lifetime to lifetime. So when I was studying that book, I came upon an article, and I don't know where I found it. You know how we all do when you're studying a teacher, you're in their site, and you're listening to their stuff, and they're quoting people, and you click a link, and before you know it, you're in a rabbit trail for that particular uh, type of teaching. So I landed on, in this uh, site for a doctor in Arizona, I'll never forget it was Arizona. And I thought, oh, cool, I wanna to move to Arizona. These people are pretty evolved. And the doctor was a doctor who performed surgeries of the knee. That was his only thing, just knee surgery. And he had, as one of the, the conditions to be accepted for knee surgery, that you believed that healing came from you. If you were expecting the surgeon to heal you, he would not take you on as a patient because he had enough history, probably 20 some odd years of history of seeing that the only patients that did not succeed were the ones who thought that he was the, the magic. Um, and he then realized, I cannot continue to grow my practice. Two things. I can't grow my practice if I continue to say, well, I have a 50-50 chance. That, that, that's not, that doesn't look good. So he decided he wanted to have 100% chance. So not only was he doing that, but the other thing is he wanted to be in integrity with healing, doing his gift of healing for people who were willing to receive it. When you believe somebody else has your power, you are not receiving their gift because you're saying it's your power, it's your gift. When you say, I deserve the gift and I'm gonna receive it through you, Listen, I know I'm not a body, I'm free, I'm pure energy, but I still receive the gift of nutrition. And when I go to the, to the um, grocery store, I'm not saying, oh, you're the one who with the nourishment and I'll, I'll never receive it. No, I take it, I bring it home. My sweetheart uh, is the one who typically blesses our meals. We receive the nourishment. I bring in the gift of nourishment, because in this world, I'm playing the game of having a physical body. And we have got to get really clear that when we make decisions from love, we are receiving love from others. When we make it from fear, we're blocking love, ours and theirs. So, so be really clear about that. And that's what this is saying. So this power of wanting must be recognized. If I want it, I need to let it in. But it doesn't come in just from the outside. You're letting yourself receive it. And that's where the giving and receiving becomes one. The doctors to you, you to the doctor and your gratitude, your healing lets them receive the ability to be able to say, yeah, I'm good at what I do because we all need to be masters of what it is that we are here to do. Be a master in your parenting, be a master in your, your dealing with grief, be a master in your dealing with illness, be a master in your dealing with your success in your business, be a master while you're getting divorced. It's okay because a master is what you are. And what a master does is a master is in charge of its own thinking, of its own mind. Therefore, it extends only love because there's no need for defense. What do you got to defend against? You know what is true for you. And there's no need for blocking because you're extending and there's no need for dishonesty because transparency is what, what you know is, is the best way to operate in this world. Sentence number nine says, you must accept its, its strength, which is your power and not its weakness. Oh, you know, I had my power and I used it to hurt myself. Don't do that. I had my power and I used it to give myself a lesson of how to use my power differently next time. We got to get really clear that our mind is conditioned with very, um, very dense, disempowering beliefs. And we got to question all of those. That's why when I realized what was going on, I began to change my language with my children. And instead of telling them, 
you know, when they would say, um, for example, oh, I want dessert. And I would say, you can't have dessert. It's, we haven't had dinner yet. Um, but mom, I want it. No, you don't. I was in that state of telling them what they want or don't want. We're basically telling them, you don't have power. And then they begin to question, hmm, well, mom's right. I don't want that. And once somebody else has power over you, well, you're in big trouble. You will be easily manipulated, which is what the, the corruption in government, what do you think it's all about? We have been complicit, easily being manipulated, giving them the power because we've been too busy, distracted, trying to become something because we don't know what we already are. So sentence number 10, you must perceive that what is strong enough to make a world can let it go and can accept correction if it is, if it is willing to see that it was wrong. All of us souls came in and we co-created a planet. We've been incarnating for thousands of years into a density. We're here to bring in light. We forget about it. This is what this is all about. We come in as light. Little by little, we get a little darker because we start believing what our parents train us to believe. Before you know it, we get even denser. We get really, really dark, thick, and dense in our beliefs where we're, we have to be right about what we believe. And some are going to descend, as this shows, into the place of evil, you know? And that evil, again, this is the charge from power versus force. Evil is nothing more than I am no longer um, remembering my goodness, so I've got to take it from you, which is why evil people want everybody miserable. And that's what corruption is. The mind got corrupted with the real virus, which is the virus of lies in our head that some are superior, others are inferior. If you think you're superior, you will stop at nothing to take everything from others. You want to pull them down into your, your, you know, your web. You want to pull them down into disempowerment. That's why the education system doesn't empower us, doesn't teach us the truth about this country. Our founding fathers' real desire for what was to happen in this, in this country, they don't teach us about the power in, in our body healing. They pull us into the medical system that makes us addicted to things. Instead of teaching us that God is inside of us, they pull us into the story of fear that you know we're sinners and not good enough and God is outside of us. You're way down here, God's way up there. You'll never get up there because you know, you're not good enough. Once we descend into this being our story, that density, we're down in the valley, we're in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, not only are you easily controllable, but you will rat on your brothers and sisters because if you find that to save yourself, you got to tell on others, you won't care about our oneness. You won't care about um, supporting one another. That's why we love the stories of people like Viktor Frankl in, during the Holocaust, a man who was in service to others regardless of the situation. Because these lights, there are, there are light beams all over the place trying to pull us back into the light. Because it's not that they're up here and we're down here, is that they, their light is on. That's what this means. The light of consciousness is on and you can be in the middle of an evil situation surrounded by, by darkness, but your light is on. And you know how you know you have light? If you go into a super, super dark room, completely dark, and you allow yourself to relax, and you let your eyesight adjust. When you let your eyesight adjust, you'll be able to see, maybe not far away, but you'll be able to see because you are the light. You bring the light into every space that you are in. We have been bamboozled into believing the light is outside of us. But if you can still see in this world, it's because light is coming through your eyes. From right behind your physical eyes is your third eye. Your light is inside of you. We're learning to activate our pineal gland so we can remember what that light is all about. And it is not the light to give us brightness. It is the light that enlightens us. And that light that enlightens us is a joyful light that recognizes I came to planet Earth, which is the most amazing playground in the galaxy. 
And when you have that joy inside and you're at peace with your power, what you can do is absolutely beyond belief because they tell us not to believe it. All right. So we have got to accept that we have to correct what is not working. We start inside of us. Paragraph five says the world that you see is but the idle witness that you were right. Let me break this down. Well, let me read the next paragraph so, so that you'll see how all this ties together. This witness is insane. Seeing, oh my God, I was right about what I saw. It's a crazy thing to believe that you're right about what you see while at the same time recognizing that that righteousness is the insane part. You trained, you trained it in its testimony. And as it gave it back to you, you listened and conceived, convinced yourself that what it saw was true. You did this to yourself. See only this, and you will also see how circular the reasoning on which your seeing rests. This was not given you. This was your gift to you and to your brothers. Be willing then to have it taken from him and be replaced with truth. And as you look upon the change in him, it will be given you to see it in yourself. All right, lots of words. Let me, let me simplify it. When we are born, bringers of love and light, like my precious little three-month-old grandson, precious child, our job, and I keep talking to his mama and daddy about this, is we're going to keep him, reminding him he is divine, he has a body, but we are going to be very deliberate, and his parents are already starting to not buy into the conditioning of the world. The conditioning that says that school system should educate him. My daughter and uh, son in law are going to homeschool. The, that the government has the power to tell them what is true. They're not participating in taking the job because they believe that their well being is in their body. That's where we're. My daughter just gave birth. She saw life created inside of her own body. She doesn't believe there's power outside of her to make that life any better. That life came from within itself. So she knows the power of the body and you're not going to convince that mama to, to give her little baby into, you know, become a guinea pig for, for research, for corporations that operate in wanting people to be ignorant. So when you understand that we came into this world incarnation after incarnation for thousands of years, and we've been buying into the density, we have been teaching that one generation to the next generation teaches, they know better for you. The teacher knows better for you. The preacher knows better for you. They have the truth. The government needs to control you. They, they give you your safety. They, they do everything that you need for you to be okay. Because we bought into that, we have been repeating this circular nonsense. And we've been stuck in this pattern, generation after generation, the sins of the fathers are given unto the son and the mothers and the grandfather and the grandmothers as well. But the grandmothers and the grandfathers and the fathers and mothers that have been conscious, we love reading their books and they, they excite us and they, they are telling us the pathway out of the hell that we have created. But most of us are too afraid to own that power because we got two thought systems in our head. Well, what if I don't take the job? What if, what if they're right? What if, what if CNN is right and, all, and Fauci is right? What if all those people are right and I make a mistake? That's somebody who doesn't trust themselves. So we've got double thinking inside of us that we have got to get clear, which is true. We got to sort out the thoughts of the ego, the thoughts of God. The thoughts that empower us are hard for us to believe are true because we've been told only a few people have that. Or the ones who really exhibit it, we were told that they're crazy, they're woo-woo, they're, you know, they're magicians, they're that, that's you know, not of God. And we've had experiences where those people who were so connected got burnt at the stake in past lives. Heck in this life, we're seeing people standing for truth and they get banned and censored and they lose their income because they earned their money through, let's say through YouTube. So we've got to get really clear that the only ones that ever get censored are the ones who are telling, who are saying something that upsets the status quo. If we were not afraid of truth, there would be no censoring on this planet. 
because we can feel what is bullshit. And if you get your bullshit meter cleaned up, you can tell what resonates and what doesn't. We are energy beings. If you want to get out of this repetitive thing, you've got to clean up your vibration. You've got to clean up your energy. How is your energy polluted? Emotions that were not felt when you were little because you were too scared to shine your light. You now need to give them permission to get reactivated. And you don't have to go looking for that. Every irritation is an invitation. Everything that scares you, that's where you lost your power. And it's a process that gently we will come back into ourselves. But first, we must say, you taught me something that is not my truth. And it's very challenging to say to mom and to dad, you know what, your hand-me-down beliefs, they're not mine. I'm not, nope, I'm not going to do it like that with my children. Grandma, teacher, God, or, or church, no, you don't have information about God for me because I have an experience of the God of my own understanding. And once you begin to decide that how you feel is more important than anything, you will be willing to feel everything that stands in your way of your clarity, and you will sit in, in absolute and complete reverence for the power of creation to come in and create such incredible craziness that you will stand there and you will lovingly release what does not serve you and look at everybody else and say, you, you brothers and sisters, just like me, are powerful holy beings in your own story. I'm not going to judge you and, and retaliate against you because you don't know what you're doing. This is what Jesus taught us to do. You'll only be able to do that if your consciousness is the high frequency. If your consciousness is in a lower frequency, you know, you're doing the work, but you're not quite ready to stand firm in your beliefs, you're going to experience some pushback and it's going to scare you. That's okay. This is why we create communities of people who are like-minded so that we can see, oh, like our sweet sister Lorelai moving through this cancer journey with incredible amount of certainty and clarity and light inside of her. Well, you get a diagnosis, go talk to somebody, you know, a sister, a brother who's been there, done that. If you've got somebody, you know, like me, who's gone through an awakening and completely changed my thought system and of everybody here, Lorelai's known me the longest. I don't know. We've, we've known each other maybe 25 years now. Um, and you knew me when I was totally inside of my story and completely, it's all about the outer world. And you've seen me come back in. And if I can do it, anybody can. There's nothing special about me. I am exactly as you are, a divine holy being that got indoctrinated into believing I'm less than what I am. So I pretended to be something that I'm not. And then my life began to fall apart. And I had to see that I created a house of cards because when my money, my husband, my stuff began to go away, you know, when those things begin to drop, including, you know, the boobs, you have to be okay with, okay, well, I'm not my body. And instead of moving through, continuing to try and keep a facade, you come inside to the truth of who you are. You're going to attract the mighty companions as the Course in Miracles calls us that will assist you on your journey. But you can't free yourself until you acknowledge that what scares you is what holds your power. You have to face it and say, you, you're a figment of my imagination. My fear of you is strictly in my mind. I'm going to start thinking differently. I may not be able to unplug myself from you just now, but I will come back with a lot of clarity about who I am and you will scare me no longer. And we do that because we see that others did it. I mean, who here goes out and buys a book about how somebody became miserable and stayed miserable for the rest of their lives? That doesn't inspire us. We buy books about people who were in the darkest pit and they got out of it. So we have lots of people who are clue givers, who are teachers who want to help us. I'm going to read this next paragraph and then we'll open this up for, I want to hear what you are getting out of this and questions, comments. All right, so paragraph six. So perhaps you do not see the need for you to give this little offering, the offering of maybe I've been wrong. We got to get off of our righteousness and very simply see it in the whole exchange of separation for salvation. We have got to say, I am willing to see that I separated myself for believing things that are not true. I've got to, I have to be the change I want to see in the world. So I got to go in my mind and look at what beliefs I have 
that have me feel something other than what I am, that have me feel fear, discomfort, uh, confusion. All that the ego is, is an idea that it is possible that things could happen to you, the child of God, without your will. Let me be clear. That's all the ego is. Thoughts and beliefs that something happened to me that I didn't, that I didn't somehow invite into my experience. That's the ego. It's the part in our mind that has been trained into believing we are not what we are. Or if you want to look at it differently, that we are what we're not. It doesn't matter how you look at it. The belief in the mind that you're weak, that you're not worthy, that you're unlovable, that you are a sinner, that you are you know, powerless, that's the ego. And when you don't believe that, you don't have an ego. Now, to whatever extent we're on this physical planet and you believe you still have a physical body, there is a, an element of ego. But when the element of ego is tiny, when it's not that big, it doesn't run your life. You know, we've all seen this symbol. I know this can be familiar to everybody. Okay, so we come in all full of light and we take on a body. So there's a little bit of ego. But what happens to us is that when we come in with our light, little by little, we begin to fill up our mind with density. So these layers of beliefs create this density that we think is the truth of who we are. So we have to be willing to acknowledge that we came in white as snow because we came in bringers of love and light. Look at any baby and you cannot see anything but innocence. But we got trained into thinking, oh yeah, you know, there, there's a little light in you. You might be a little light, but then we covered ourselves up. So what is this journey that we're on? It's very simple. It's a journey of releasing what is not true. This is a painful journey of letting go of our identity. It's like we're stripping away these beliefs that we thought kept us safe, but imprisoned us. So what is the journey of self-awareness is becoming aware that you're not your thoughts. What is the journey of awakening? is to have seen enough that it has no power over you. And when you are awake, you realize, okay, I have a body and I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. And a little bit remains. Let me just make it a little, a little bit of your, your belief that your body remains just so you can have this human experience. So we return ourselves to realizing that what we are is powerful beyond measure. And without that willingness, it is impossible. So the ego is an idea, idea, thoughts, beliefs in your mind, that it is possible that things could happen to the powerful creator that you are without your will. Can you imagine when you face life and you go, yep, I created this crazy husband. I created that second crazy husband. And I created that third crazy husband. So yes, how fun has it been that I have been lost in these relationships? How exciting that I created careers and jobs that I didn't like and some that I did like. How wonderful that I created some of the most uncomfortable experiences of my life. I am so excited that I created being humiliated because I could never have found my humbleness had I not been humiliated. I am so excited that I created all of the, the, the situations, the illnesses, the abandonment, because by facing those things, I realized, whoa, I'm abandoning myself if I think you abandon me. If I shrink because you leave, I abandon me. I can't give somebody else power over what happens inside of me. Nobody can get in my head and make me think thoughts that I am having. If they're in my head, they're my thoughts. But my power is I don't have to believe a single thought that's in my head. Just because it's programmed in there doesn't mean I have to believe it. Like you have a computer full of stuff that's not true. You don't go and say, oh, well, Google said it's true. So it must be true. Some people do. The people whose minds are programmed, yes, they go, oh, well, Google said it came up first. It must be true. But one who knows that you can pick more thoughts, well, then you go search somewhere else. And that's what this is telling us. Own that everything happened for you not to you. Don't be a victim. It happened for you to see how you're showing up 
your relationship with life changes drastically. So if you say that things happen to you against your will, you are saying that the will of God is not yours. Because if God created you to create and you're saying you created my reality, then you're not owning that God created you to create, which means you can't have a relationship with God. And if you don't have a relationship with God, you can't own you and God are one. You can't own the power of creation that is inside of you. This is amazing stuff. So this is the son of God's replacement for his will, a mad revolt against what must forever be. You know why teenagers revolt? Because they get little by little pulled into disempowerment. When the parents tell them, you got to go to school, you got to study classes you don't want, you got to wake up when you, your body doesn't feel like waking up, you've got to submit to the system, you've got to behave, you got to curfew, you got to do this, that, and the other. Not that guidelines are not okay. My kids had guidelines and we didn't have battles over guidelines because they were, I created guidelines in partnership with them. We co-created. So what is an appropriate time for you to be home from that party? What's an appropriate time for you to be home from the movies? We didn't say 10 o'clock, you got to be home. If the movie ends at 1030, okay, it's appropriate for you to stay out till 1030. If the party ends at, at one, then be home by 130. We, we aligned with what was appropriate in the moment. Not one rule fits all. We allowed ourselves to be guided by the guidance inside each of our children. Of course, that's called crazy parenting, but I'm going to here to tell you it's called conscious parenting. And to be conscious parent is to honor this powerful being inside of another being, because when you can see them as equally as powerful as you, your relationship with authority changes. When you no longer think you're the authority of everybody, then you realize nobody is an authority of you. And as the Course in Miracles says, I am, I am under no laws but God's. That's why, you know, president, dictators, that stuff doesn't scare me. None of that. There's no fear for me in that because we're all the same, operating at different levels of consciousness, which is what Jesus says is the only difference between Jesus and us in the Course in Miracles. Jesus says, you and I are exactly the same, except I know who I am and you don't. But I know, Jesus speaking, I know who you are, even while you don't, which is why I send you information to remind you. That's the only difference. The church told us Jesus is special, the only son of God, blah, 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 you know, killed for our sins. Jesus wasn't killed for our sins. Jesus was killed because there were people sinning, and sinning means that they were thinking wrongly. They were thinking wrongly, and they didn't want Jesus to expose that. So what do they do? They blamed us. It's our fault that Jesus got, got killed so that they don't take responsibility. No, they, that, was the, that was one of the first major acts of censorship. We're going to censor the truth coming from this man, and so we're going to crucify him. And guess what? We believed this nonsense for millennia. And here Jesus, who is not a body, is still talking to us. How is that possible? How can Jesus still be talking to us? And when you read the course, you can feel the truth of it. Well, because Jesus is energy, Jesus is consciousness, and we have access to all that is. You know that light that you are, that light inside of you? It's the same light that is outside of you. It's the same light that is in everyone. It's the same light that we're all made of. It's the same foundation of light that we all have access to. And when you open up your mind and you let that light come in, you receive guidance. I, I received guidance from Jesus too. Um, that's how I ended up finding Course in Miracles. That's how I, I was told to write the Power of Awareness workshops. All of that, I let myself receive from the one that knows who I am because I forgot. And the Course calls that the Holy Spirit, that voice inside of you, that little light coming through your eyes that you don't realize is the light of your beingness. You know, when somebody dies, what goes? The light goes out of their eyes. So, the light goes out of their body. The body's there. Your mom, my mom wasn't the one dead on, in the bed. My mom was the essence that uh, animated her. And when that left, the body, it didn't leave me. It's still here. It's still part of who I am. I just let go of a bunch of her limiting beliefs. So God's replacement for his will. Um, so this is the son of God who goes into the density and, and forgets who they are. We went into revolt, teenagers revolt. 
And guess what is happening to the world right now? When we revolted as teenagers and pushed back and were ornery, the system got hold of us. We, we sent all of our children into the system when we were unconscious. The system got a hold of them. And now what is happening to humanity? Those who are waking up, unlike us, who had maybe years of, of or decades to do this journey a little bit more smoothly, those who are seeing, wait a second, you're going to tell me what you can put in my body. You're going to tell me where I can go and can't go. You're going to jab me for something that has 99.9% uh, ability to heal. I can get over that. You're going to tell me I can't go to my favorite bar or I can't visit my grandmother in the nursing home if I don't take this concoction that is not even FDA approved. Guess what's happening? The opposite. We are revolting. We have to revolt. There has to be an activation of the lower chakras. That anger that you didn't express as a child when you suppressed your voice has to get activated. And Americans, well, we're some of the most polite people in the world because we've been indoctrinated into good behavior. And we are the last ones on the planet to, that, that are necessary to revolt because we are so busy acquiring stuff and making our houses pretty, making ourselves look pretty and creating TikTok videos that we don't spend time with what's inside that wants to awaken. But because this beautiful, you know, virus that, that uh, is doing its part in the world has given opportunity for a jab. And if you do your research, you'll find out that anybody who's evil, there's things get planned. These things don't happen willy nilly because they operate from the past. These are past things being planned for a future. When you're operating with God, you're operating in the now. So you can't be malevolent because you're not plotting. You have to be totally, completely in the now, peaceful and, and listening. So these people whose who's freedom, going to the bar, going to the, to the shop, if they can't do that, if they can't travel, oh my God, that's pissing them off. Well, that's a good thing. Because in that getting pissed off, there is a roar. There is a, a rage that has to activate our willingness to advocate for ourselves. Because we lost our willingness to stand in our own ground when we got indoctrinated out of our own power. There was a revolt from those teenagers. We got to activate that teenage voice. You know why teenage, teenagers knew more than you? Because they came in with more access to knowledge than we did. And we then told them, no, you don't know that. So mm -hmm. they've got to access that voice that wants to have that rage. So let me, let me read this again. This is the son of God's replacement for his will, a mad revolt against what must forever be. We have to revolt and claim the truth of who we are. This is the statement that he has the power to make God powerless and so to make it for himself and leave himself without what God was, has willed for him. As teenagers, when we give up our power and we have our moment of revolt as a teenager and then we acquiesce to the system, we are saying, I'm not who God created me to be. That's why, you know, that's why they keep us in school until our, our 20s is to ensure that our mind gets completely indoctrinated in things that are not true about us and our brothers and sisters. So we have got to revolt against that insanity inside of us and let it illuminate the path for us out of where, where we have been. So let me read the last part here. So this is the mad idea that you have enshrined upon your altars and which you worship, an identity that I'm not who I am as God created me. And anything that threatens this seems to attack your faith. For here, it is invested. Invested in my faith is my identity, who I am, my mask, my status in society, my titles, my money, my whatever. Think not that you are faithless for your belief and trust in this is strong indeed. So we'll, we'll keep going to that next week. We have faith, but what do we have faith in? Faith in our mask or faith in our truth? We have faith in externals having power over us or power being inside of us. We have faith. To where we place our faith is what we have power of. If we want to create a new earth, we have to believe in the power 
the desire for this new earth, we have to come together. And there are light workers all over the world inside of every single segment. There are light workers in religion. There are light workers, bringers of truth in the government. They're in medicine. They are in the education system. They are in the homes. They're mothers. They're, they're fathers. They are in the homeless, in the streets. They're benevolent beings walking around, shining their light. They are everywhere. They're in corporations. They are, some of them are CEOs. Some of them are janitors. What is required right now is for us collectively to send out a loud roar to make sure that we do not conform to what the system wants us to conform to. And many are going to be the screamers. Some of us don't need to scream because I already did that. Lorelai and I did it in the course room. You know, we did all kinds of beating the pillow and got all of our anger and our rage out. But today there are people in lots of different places that are going to revolt, some of them violently, thank them. Thank them because they are going to be expressing what has been suppressed, that has allowed this world to go into enslavement. Let those who are roaring, let those who are packing you know, pistols, let those who've got the pitchforks, let them who have the wonderful videos, let them who scream with their writing, let those who are standing for the truth of who we are, let them roar because each has to express at the level that they're, that they're still suppressed. And that is a beautiful thing. The planet is on, is on the verge of a bifurcation. We are about to split. Those who want to live in darkness are going to be able to do that. And those who want to live in the light are going to be able to do that. The splitting is happening. It is real. It's happening in families. You know, I've got my baby daddy told my daughter who had a baby, you know, if she wanted to come to the family reunion, she had to wear a mask and because she's not vaccinated and they're going to come in and poison everybody because the system has trained them that it's the unvaccinated that is the big virus now. I mean, look at how crazy things have gotten only because the mind can be controlled. So if you don't take control of what you believe, your faith is going to be on what was trained into you. And you guess what? When you believe what was trained into you, you are not in control of what's in you. And they will be happy to control it for you and tell you it's for your own good. And you'll own nothing and you'll be happy and you'll have no power and you'll be happy and you'll, you'll have social scoring and you'll be happy. And that's called communism. All right. So with that, I'm complete with a sharing of what's in the course and I want to open this up, but let's be clear. A mad revolt is necessary because a mad revolt is what we did to God. We revolted against the truth and we turned mad. So we better get mad about what's going on and revolt and reclaim our power because to revolt is to be revolutionary. And when you look at the word revolution, the word love is in there too, because it's an evolution back into the truth of who we are. All right, peeps, please. I've got to jump in. I have to jump in. I, I have so much to say, but I will do a two minute soundbite. And Richard Burdick tells me nobody obeys him like I do when he says you've got 30 seconds. Or... So first of all, you're always brilliant. But under the Sagittarius moon with your five planets in Sag, I mean, man, thank you for talking right to me and to everyone else I know. So I have some nuggets that you said that I'm just going to say to people since this is on the recording. Whatever we blame makes us lame. The process of awakening is instant. Colon cancer, colon rectal cancer, by the way. That's, been, that's my awakening, and I got that when you said it. We have learned to value safety over sovereignty. When I believe someone else has the power, I can't receive their gift. We all need to be masters in what we are here to do. Master in a master is in charge of their own thinking. Uh, we've been distracted trying to be someone because we don't know who we are. The journey of, I can't read that. Oh, I'm in the world, but not of it. The journey of awakening, I'm in the world, but not of it. So isn't it interesting? You say revolutionary. We're coming up on a full moon in Aquarius on Friday and another one in, in, uh, in August. I had almost an hour and a half conversation with Carol O'Connell today. So, which is, and Aquarius is about awakening. That's your Jupiter. Okay, I'm almost done. Um, mighty companions. I love that from the course. 
willing to activate ourselves. And then um, um, uh, to your point about, you know, the control from the outside, a very good, a dear friend of mine who's been helping me through this journey actually said on a call, I would rather have you die of cancer than COVID because I'm in the, I'm in the query of, am I going to get vaccinated? Right. Yeah. So, and I thought, and she said it again. And I said, you know what? You're a good friend of mine since 1987. If you say that to me again, I am not talking to you because that is not what I want to hear. So I'll, I'll end with this. Oh, one more thing. Um, we're in the last day of cancer today, no pun intended, uh, of the sign of cancer. And that's the most emotional, pay attention, Christo, it's your new moon that happened, uh, in the most emotional, sensitive, nourishing, nurturing, moody, clingy, helpless, overwhelmed sign in the zodiac. Take your pick. And I posted on Facebook today because this quote from the course that I'm going to say so speaks to what we get the opportunity to do. And it just totally confirms everything you just said, Lina. And that is all the past except its beauty is gone and nothing is left but a blessing. And I'll end with this. This is something Lina said to me a couple of days ago. And I would say it to all of you, wherever you feel it might be true. She said, I have blown out my egoic bullshit. And isn't it interesting that I would create cancer in that part of my body? Blow so, it out. <laughs> to blow out your egoic bullshit. Go for it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> That's so beautiful. I, I wrote the word revolt. When you see that we have to revolt, you see the word love is right in there, right in the middle. So we got to reclaim our, our truth be right about what is true about us and let the rest go read the list and you know to evolve um we also the word love is an evolve thank you so much for that lorelei that was <laughs> perfect so just unmute yourself anybody who wants to share yes christo well yeah that was awesome um from you and for lorelei you certainly captured the a good summary of what was said. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you mentioned something, Lina, um, <clears throat> towards the end about they will do it for us and we won't have to take responsibility and we must just obey and listen and we'll be, we'll be happy. Well, I'm not sure what kind of happiness that is, but <laughs> I, I think it's more comfortable or we'll be complacent or whatever we be. But happiness for me doesn't come out when someone controls me and does things for me because doing things for myself is so creative and it's it's power it's so oh it's ecstatic and that's what they want to take away from us is our happiness and ecstatic co-creation with with uh, with the co-creator with the creator of the of the of the universe you know that's what they're wanting to take away from us they want to be the creator of a, of our world so. Yes, so I was actually mm -hmm. quoting what the uh, New World Order people uh, are saying that they're <laughs> no. going to do, which is that you will own nothing, you will have no power, you will have no say so, you won't have any money, um, and you'll be happy. And the reason they can say you'll be happy is because we all got trained into our happiness comes from the outside. You'll be happy when you get, you know, the, the new toy in the cereal box. It starts when we're little, very little. You'll be happy when you get, you know, your Christmas present. You'll be happy when you get your paycheck. You'll be happy when you get your retirement. So we've been trained into that. So you're speaking, yes, clearly. Yeah. If we know that happiness comes from within, we're not controllable. But the, the bulk of humanity is still under the programming, the ego bullshit, the belief systems, that BS that says that we are only happy if. And we got to wake up from that. We got to wake up from that. Thank you so much for that. It, it, it's such a trick that they're playing on us to make us think that we that we will be happy if we get everything done for us. Well, it's a trick. Yeah. It's mm. a trick that we participated when we decided to enter the planet. And those of us who are waking up came in knowing we're going to go in there and we're going to wake up so that we can set things straight. And that is that is why they're not playing the trick on us. We participated in the trick and untricked ourselves. So our power comes from realizing nobody's tricking us. We got conditioned and we got to be clear that through the conditioning, we gave our power away, but we gave our power away. So we chose to be tricked so that we could have the experience of untricking ourselves. So in... 
the terminology that I use in my classrooms, I say, well, we fucked ourselves. So we got to get them fucked and we've got to do it ourselves and we, we've got to do it ourselves. So who else? Please unmute yourselves and share any nuggets that you received and how you're going to take these and um, maybe apply them in, in your, your everyday life. Or did you hear something that activated something inside of you to revolt against you um, tricking yourself? <laughs> Come on. I see a lot of you chatty people on I'll, here. I'll jump in. Thank you, Miss Kathy. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, wow, when you were talking about this. Kathy, if you're still speaking, I can't hear you. Me too. You know, after this year of our. Oh, Kathy, you're coming in and out. So start again, please. Kathy. Kathy, we cannot hear you. Does somebody else want to jump in? Well, maybe Kathy and give Kathy a minute to maybe work on the microphone or whatever might be internet. So we've got a couple of new people sharing JC or JC. I'd love to hear from you guys. What did you think about today's conversation? I'm so grateful you joined us. Share. All right, Kathy, Angela, Luana, let me hear from you. Jody, you always have something to say. Vern, did you get any nuggets? Or Rebecca? Vern, where are you? Don't you have something to say? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have something to say. Hey, you guys, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Thank I'm you. so sorry about no, that. No, no worries. I forgot I have my Bluetooth headphones in. Um, what I was speaking of was um, when you spoke about education, when you spoke about schooling, um, and it really woke me up to, you know, we have a 12 year old son who's, you know, currently in school and I was fearful to do homeschool. Still sort of am because I don't want it to take away from what I want to experience and what I want to do, just to be honest, and would I do the best job? But after this, surprising amazing year of my son being home for a whole year um, still you know using their curriculum but it wasn't hard it wasn't hard so so really recognizing the possibility of being aware of what our children are learning being a part of what our children are learning and recognizing that the system doesn't have all the answers. I mean, you know, in, in my heart, I feel like there could be a great combination because, you know, I would love for him to still have the connection with kids and he loves his teachers and he's such an amazing student, but just really being aware that, okay, this is a system that I've just bought into and is it really serving him? So, so really just when you were speaking about that, it was like a light bulb went off. And um, so I'm just going to dig a little deeper in that and have conversations with my husband. And I can't wait to share this uh, with John, because I think this this uh, particular session has been incredibly powerful. So just wanted to thank you for that. Oh, Kathy, thank you so much for sharing that. So I've become more involved with some groups um, that, that are doing their part. This is why Wednesday night I was invited to speak to yet another group um, about you know, my perspective that life, liberty, and happiness, not only is it in our constitution, but it's also in A Course in Miracles, is our God-given rights so whether you come at it from the, the legality of the constitution or, or because you feel it, because it's our birthright, um, either way, we, those of us who are wanting to preserve that freedom, that liberty to choose, we're finding each other as we are here. And in one of the groups that I that went to a meeting last week, there was a woman who is very involved with uh, people who are for, for what is it? Uh, educate liberty in education, freedom, education, freedom. Like there's medical freedom, and there's all kinds of other types of freedom. So I'm going to send you uh, a link because the homeschooling movement is huge. This year, I saw a statistic countrywide in the U.S. 13% of of uh, parents are taking their children out of the public and also the uh, private school system and in, in creating co-ops, which have been going on for a long time. 
most of the co-ops tended to be a little bit more on the Christian side, but now there are co-ops that are, are all, you know, about education without indoctrination. And I'll send you that link so you have a place to start to do some research. And these, these groups, these co-ops are, and actually there was a teacher who had just left. She did not renew her, her teaching, uh, uh, what, what was the contract, in Gwinnett County Schools. And she said she just couldn't keep teaching anymore because she saw what she was supposed to teach and it went completely against her knowingness. And she's a Reiki master. She, she believes in, you know, in internal power. And what she was saying is that there are teachers who now are willing to receive their salary from parent co-ops who come together and say, you know, if each parent contributes, you know, you get 10 parents, you get a teacher who's been making $40,000, 4,000, you know, by 10 people, whatever, however that works out, 10 families, you can create your own version of school that works for you where the kids meet together once or twice a week and or stay at home the rest of the time but covid has given us many gifts and one of the greatest gifts was to see not only quiet time to contemplate and go inside but for parents to see that the education system may not necessarily be what we thought it was going to be and that staying home with our children may not be as bad as we might have thought it would be but i suspect that that 13 percent is going to be a lot bigger um, come next year because there is a wave like the wave that's behind Lorelai's background there. There is a tsunami of, of revolting that is happening. And that is only going to be possible when we decide, yep, I can do it. I can homeschool. I can do whatever that is. Rebecca, you want that link also? Okay, very cool. If um, you'll do me a favor, Rebecca, and Send me via messenger because I know we're connected in Facebook, your email, and I'll send it to you via, or you know what, never mind, I'll put it in, in um, messenger. I'll send you the link via messenger, Facebook, because I've got yours. All right, so I would love to hear from those of you who are new today. If you got any nuggets, um, Sharon, I think it's JC or JC, love to hear from you. And then from the rest of you, Jody, to get some nuggets or Kathy or Luana. Angela, regulars, burn. Yes, Luana. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, there I we always, go. I always get nuggets from you. But you know, it's interesting, like like you're talking about seeing the the people wake up and masses are waking up, and I'm kind of gotten addicted to TikTok lately. And so many people are speaking out, so many patriots. And yes, it's very, it's exciting, but I have to watch myself and not really get into the fear and stay in that higher vibration. And I do pretty good, but, but it, it can kind of get to you a little bit because people are saying, prepare, 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 and UN is going to come knocking on your door, maybe going to jab your grandmother with the, <laughs> so anyway, I'm just, um, yeah, I don't know what my, I was just sharing that, but uh, staying above, it's keeping the frequencies high. Well, do what your parents taught you when you were little. Don't open the door to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, yes. Patriot, conscious oh, so. patriot. Do you have anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'd love to hear. Wisdom, where are you? <laughs> I, do, I do feel a um, sense of um, knowing that we are gonna be forming more of a communities together and doing these things like you're talking about, Lana, and I am uh, excited about that. And what's interesting is I don't have clarity yet on what my role is in this area, but I know it's it's something. So I, I'm being patient for it to evolve, but I feel very strongly that I'll be in this community that I'm in really um, big yeah. and boy. Yeah, and we all have talents that that are done in a healthy way, in a in a way that honors the mind, body, spirit. Um, so yeah, there's room for everybody, and yeah. God knows we can we can all use conscious nutrition, conscious well being, conscious yeah. working sure. out, conscious yeah. love of the physical vessel, nurturing it. Exactly. Totally. Well, I am so grateful you guys chose to spend this this hour and a half with me. And I am so grateful that, you know, you, you've received some seeds that got planted today from A Course in Miracles in your mind and 
the most important thing that I hope you take away is that you're powerful beyond measure. And your power, when you use it to serve humanity, is going to be a blessing. If you use it to blame humanity, you are going to create for yourself some serious suffering because it activates fear when you think others are taking your power away. So get your lessons, get your blessings, and then go out there knowing that you are not alone. You are not alone. You've got mighty companions with you. And here we are. And I hope you plan on seeing coming Wednesday night, next week, Wednesday night to the talk that I'll be doing. And I'll send out um, a message. And if you want to join my Telegram chat group, Ascension Through A Course of Miracles, um, I'm posting things in there, um, trying to move it from it being too much about all the bad stuff and the scary stuff to more of the empowering things um, in that chat group. All right, everybody, let's just say goodbye. I want to hear your voices. Unmute yourselves, please. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Tell you. Bye. 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 This Bye. is JC. I totally enjoyed it. Thank you, JC. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Sherry. This was great. Thank you. Thank you, Cher. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.